The Biden administration says the number of illegal migrant crossings has actually been dropping this week. But the influx is still large, and it puts pressure on communities far from the southern border. New York City's mayor is saying that they are running out of options to provide shelter for new arrivals and are now looking at locations ranging from the Rikers Island Jail to public school gyms and suburban hotels. The county executive of Orange County, New York, says some homeless vets were pushed out of a hotel housing to make way for the migrants. The 20 uh, veterans that were that were displaced, that, that is really sends a bad message. You can't just drop a bombshell on them and kick them back out to the streets. Leave the veterans alone. Joining me now is Janet Murguia, the president and CEO of Unidas U.S., the nation's largest Hispanic civil rights and advocacy organization. Janet, it's so good to see you. This is a problem that you and I have been talking about for decades, and there have been proposals, bipartisan proposals on the Hill that never made it. And, we, and we're seeing the result of that, I know. Andrea, in these types of actions. We've always said at Unidos U.S. that a failure to modernize an outdated asylum system, failure to achieve a comprehensive immigration reform to fix a very broken legal and uh, immigration system is necessary, and that the brunt of that failure to provide some sort of reforms would fall on state and local governments. And that's what we're seeing here. And unfortunately, it's creating real tension and divisions and nothing that anybody would want. We do believe we can have targeted resources towards these local governments in particular. And a reminder that there is a social sector out there, a network of community-based organizations, NGOs, and churches who are better prepared to handle and support these families, but they need resources, too. So until we fix our immigration system and reform our asylum system, we need to make sure that those supports and resources are getting to the right entities that know how to support and transition these families and individuals to their sponsors and to families and neighborhoods that will support them and embrace them. Well, that's a rational approach. <laughs> uh, an irrational approach, I might suggest, is to, to load people onto buses, send them to a place they don't know, with no connections, no outerwear if they're going north in the winter, and no prior notice to the communities to which they're going. Well, what we're seeing is this all of this being politicized, and the fact that some Republican governors have created these political stunts instead of thoughtfully trying to figure out how we can transition these families into the appropriate places, is a failure of really decency, and it's cruel. It's cruel to use these families and individuals as political pawns so that politicians can just posture on this and not try to solve this, solve this problem. And pitting people who are living in deprivation against other people living in deprivation, homeless vets, should not be kicked out of housing to make room for migrants, pitting two underserved no. communities against each other. It's cruel. It's not rational. And it, no one wants to see our veterans displaced. Uh, and I think for us, it's important to remember, as you just said, these families represent the most vulnerable of populations, and they are seeking only the minimal types of supports here so that they can begin to transition and and be get on their feet. But we do need to prepare and invest in an infrastructure here that can allow that to happen. And it's you, being politicized. You talk about the politicization of it. Uh, for the last decade, Democrats are actually losing ground with Latino voters to Republicans, um, which is, you know, Latino voters are by no means monolithic, and they come from all parts of the world and different backgrounds. And, you know, some are trending Republican. Well, I think that's a result of a, a lot of other elements, but there's no question that it is incumbent on both parties to find the right 
way to engage and to really come together to solve the uh, broken immigration system and to address the broken immigration system. And what we're seeing as a result of it, the fact is, is that the Latino community wants a secure border, but we also want it to be humane in terms of the orderly way in which we receive uh, individuals who are fleeing desperate circumstances and who really don't want to leave their home countries. But we have to reconcile our own values as a country and update in a rational way and modernize our asylum system. But there's no rational policy debates that are happening right now. So in the meantime, you're seeing these stunts and they're really taking over. And Latino voters, all the voters ultimately understand and I think will welcome individuals who know we need to reform our immigration system and Congress ultimately needs to be the one to act. And we need to send representatives to Congress who are going to act on reforming immigration. Janet Mergea, I have to leave it there for now. To be continued, though. <laughs> Thank you.